Burns Supper. A Burns Supper is a celebration of the life and poetry of the poet Robert Burns, 25th of January 175,921 July 1796, the author of many Scots poems. The suppers are normally held on or near the poet's birthday, 25th of January, occasionally known as Robert Burns Day, or Robbie Burns Day or Robbie Burns Day but more commonly known as Burns Night. However, in principle, celebrations may be held at any other time of the year. The first supper was held in memoriam at Burns Cottage by Burns's friends, on July 21, 1801, the fifth anniversary of his death, it has been a regular occurrence ever since. The first still extant Burns Club was founded in Greenock in 1801 by merchants who were born in Ayrshire, some of whom had known Burns. They held the first Burns supper on what they thought was his birthday, January 29, 1802, but in 1803. They discovered the Air Parish records that noted his date of birth was actually January 25, 1759. Since then, suppers have been held on or about 25 of January. Burns suppers may be formal or informal. Both typically include haggis, a traditional Scottish dish celebrated by Burns Inn, Scotch whiskey and the recitation of Burns's poetry. Formal dinners are hosted by organizations such as Burns Clubs, the Freemasons or St. Andrew's Societies. They occasionally end with dancing when ladies are present. Formal suppers follow a standard order. A piper generally greets the guests, who gather and mix as at any informal party. At less formal gatherings, traditional Scottish music is played. The host says a few words welcoming everyone to the supper and perhaps stating the reason for it. All the guests are seated and grace is said, usually using the Selkirk grace. A well-known Thanksgiving said before meals that uses the Scots language. Although attributed to Burns, the Selkirk Grace was already known in the 17th century as the Galloway Grace or the Covenanters Grace. It came to be called the Selkirk Grace because Burns was said to have delivered it at a dinner given by the Earl of Selkirk. The supper starts with a soup course. Normally, a Scottish soup, such as Scotch broth, potato soup, cullen skink, or cockaliki, is served. Everyone stands as the haggis is brought in. It is usually brought in by the cook on a large dish, generally while a piper plays the bagpipe and leads the way to the host's table, where the haggis is laid down. A man's amen for that, Robbie Burns medley or the star Robbie Burns might be played out the host, or perhaps a guest, then recites the At the line his knife see rustic labor diked, the speaker normally draws and sharpens a knife. At the line and cut you up why ready slicked. He plunges it into the haggis and cuts it open from end to end. When done properly, the ceremony is a highlight of the evening. At the end of the poem, a whiskey toast will be proposed to the haggis, and the company will sit down to the meal. The haggis is traditionally served with mashed potatoes, tatties, and mashed sweet, neeps. A dessert course, cheese courses, coffee, etc., may also be part of the meal. The courses normally use traditional Scottish recipes. For instance, dessert may be Cranachan or Tipsy Laird, whiskey trifle, followed by oat cakes and cheese, all washed down with the water of life. Ushkabiha, Scotch whiskey. When the meal reaches the coffee stage, various speeches and toasts are given. The main speaker gives a speech remembering some aspect of Burns's life or poetry. It may be either light hearted or serious and may include the recitation of a poem or a song by Burns. A toast to the immortal memory of Robert Burns then follows. This was originally a short speech given by a male guest in thanks to the women who had prepared the meal. However, it is now much more wide-ranging and generally covers the male speaker's view on women. It is normally amusing and not offensive, particularly since it will be followed by a reply from the lassies concerned. The men drink a toast to the women's health. This is occasionally, and humorously, called the toast to the laddies. Like the previous toast, it is generally now quite wide-ranging. A female guest will give her views on men and reply to any specific points raised by the previous speaker. Like the previous speech, it should be amusing but not offensive. Quite often, the speakers giving this toast and the previous one will collaborate so that the two toasts complement each other. After the speeches there may be singing of songs by Burns, such as A Fond Kiss, Parcel of Rogues and A Man's A Man, and more poetry, such as To a Mouse, To a Louse. Tam a Shanter, the Twa Dogs and Holy Willie's Prayer. That may be done by the individual guests or by invited experts, and it goes on for as long as the guests wish. It may include other works by poets influenced said be Burns, particularly poets writing in Scots. Foreign guests may also be invited to sing or say works from their land. 
Finally, the host will call on one of the guests to give the vote of thanks. Then, everyone is asked to stand, join hands, and sing Alt Lang Syne to bring the evening to an end. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.